Hello and welcome to this India Today special. This week, the vice presidential elections will be fought between Jagdeep Dhankar, the former West Bengal governor and the NDA candidate, and Margaret Alba, veteran Congress politician and parliamentarian. And joining me now is Margaret Alba herself. Appreciate your joining me, uh, Mrs. Alba. If I were to say that you are fighting a symbolic token fight because the numbers are heavily weighted in favor of the NDA candidate, Mr. Dhankar. Would I be right that this is a symbolic fight for you? I don't think it's a token fight. I think many things can happen. I'm fighting on behalf of almost 20 parties and we are making a statement that things are not going well in Parliament mm -hmm. and we do believe this is the time for change. Because you have actually written to a number of the parliamentarians talking about what you say is a breakdown in the fundamental democratic processes and the way Parliament is functioning. You yourself have been a several times MP. Is that what you are fighting this election about that you believe that the Vice President, as the Chairperson of the Rajya Sabha, needs to restore, in a way, the primacy of Parliament. Yes, certainly yes. And at the same time, look at the alternative that the government has presented. A candidate who turned Bengal upside down, I would say from the cellar to the dome, you put such a person in the chair in the Rajya Sabha where there always has been a certain decorum in the past, a certain, um, if I may say so, respect for the House of Elders. You see the situation as it is today. It's bad enough. But imagine having him in the chair to run that house. You know, let's be very clear. You're virtually suggesting that Mr. Dhankar is incapable of es ensuring decorum inside Parliament. That's what you're suggesting. That, I that you believe that I your rival say, is someone I who cannot handle Parliament. I didn't say incapable. I said the past record of what happened in Bengal is certainly something to be worried about. But ironically then, the main party of Bengal, the majority of party of Bengal, which is often taken on Mr. Dhankar, uh, that is Mamta Banerjee's Trinamool Congress, has decided to abstain from your election. They are not supporting you, even though you say that Mr. Dhankar is someone who was taking on the Bengal government. Let's wait and see. You, you had a good relationship with Mamta Banerjee. Very Did it disappoint close. you? that Mamta Banerjee, who is an integral part of the opposition, and you claim in a way to stand for this wider opposition, chose not to support you more openly. Could be. But I still believe that she is the one who has spearheaded opposition unity. She is the one that has taken on the BJP openly and won in Bengal despite everything they did. And therefore, Mamta has got her own agenda. And let's see what happens by the 6th. But somewhere, as I said, you are disappointed, ma'am. That, as you said, if the opposition is to be united, as we even saw with the president election where there was cross-voting, now in the vice president election, a major opposition party chooses not to back you. What does that suggest? You are all talking about the presidential election and cross-voting. Yes. Do you know that the votes that went to the president, I mean to the candidate, were among the lowest in the history of elections to the president's post? And the vice president's, I'm sorry, and the opposition's candidate, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. he got the third highest votes polled by any candidate for the presidential election from the opposition. But it's still a wide gap, Ms. Alba, a huge gap. And if I look at the numbers in even the uh, vice president elections, as of now, out of the 770-odd uh, MPs, the BJP seems to have close to a 500 yes. uh, uh, on their side. So 
I mean, where do you expect this large scale I switch am, to take place? I am not saying that you fight an election because you are winning it. You fight an election on principles, on a certain agenda and placing your point of view before the voters. And that's what we are doing as a united opposition. Uh, what are those candidate. principles? Let's get this clear. You're saying you're fighting for principles for an agenda. Yes. What, is, what are those principles for a that you're fighting? For a parliament that respects the right of every member to speak. Do you know there are almost, I think, five to six hundred members who have not been able to speak in parliament since it came, I mean, since it was elected. You have adjournments, you have suspensions, you have, if I may say so, rule by the majority and parliament is supposed to be a forum where people from different parts of the country, elected by the people, representatives, come to focus on the issues of the people, to speak about their electorate, to speak about their constituencies, their states and their concerns. Have you seen it happening? The chairman is the person who has the primary responsibility to bring government and opposition together, mm -hmm. to work out an acceptable agenda to both sides. Price rise in this session has been the issue on which you are suspending members for demanding that you give us a debate on price rise. One of your agendas or principles you are saying is that you want to get parliament to function again effectively. You uh, have had very good connections with Jagan Mohan Reddy's family, but he is seeming, seemingly aligned with the, with the government. You knew why, uh, why Rajshekar Reddy was a colleague of yours in the Congress. You had very good relations with Mamta Banerjee, you all have worked together in the Congress. You have, I am told, a decent equation with Naveen Patnaik. You have known his family also for years. Your family has been in politics for decades. And yet all of these individuals I mentioned are either abstaining or likely to vote with the government. What does that say somewhere? I don't know what you say. I mean, what, why are you asking me? You should ask them. Why, after talking so much about opposition unity, about fighting and coming together before 2024, why, under what pressure, under what threat, under what blackmail? Are you, saying saying Mamta, are you saying Mamta Banerjee or Jagan Mohan Reddy or Naveen Patnaik are supporting the government under some threat or pressure or blackmail? You ask them. I can't speak on their behalf. But what's happening? Shiv Sena today, I'm not condoning any kind of corruption. But once an electoral process is on Rajdeep, look at the electoral law. You can't meddle with the voters list. No, but you can't have the enforcement, you can't also tell the enforcement directorate who they will arrest and who they will not. The law must take its own course. Let the opposition is constantly saying the ED is only targeting us. The government is saying you've got some corruption involved. That's why the ED yes. is exposing you. But the moment the corrupt people join the BJP, they go through the washing machine and they become, whether it was a Mukul Roy, whether it is the Chief Minister of Assam, whether it was Adhikari or anybody else, I can give a whole list of people. The moment they join the BJP, mm -hmm. all the cases are dropped and they become holier than thou. You know, in conclusion therefore, what have you learned? You know, it's almost as if you come out in a way from quasi-retirement to, to take up this challenge. What have you learnt in the last four weeks? Have things now substantially changed? We now seem to be in a BJP dominant world. You did most, most of your politics in a Congress dominant world. What is the biggest change you've seen between then and now? I certainly feel that there is a sense of fear both within and outside parliament. People are not allowed to speak. There is no debate. There is no discussion. You talk on the public platform and you are charged with sedition or anti-national 
statement. Uh, people are in jail because of what they have spoken. People are in jail because of what they have written or tweeted. You have police go from one state to another and just pick up people and lock them up. I mean, what is the type of democracy that we are living in, Rajadeep? I have lived, I've had 50 years of public life. Yes, there were ups and downs. There was the emergency that journalists exactly, were arrested, if I may exactly remind were, you again. They, yes, it was declared emergency and the emergency laws prevailed. Mm -hmm. Is there emergency declared today? And yet you all are being picked up, you all are being warned, you all are being threatened. I know editors who pick up the phone and tell the person, don't put that out today. I know it because people who are in the media have told me. And or they are told, please see that this fellow is eased out. And they are eased out. I mean, I'm not saying that things didn't go wrong, but there was an official declaration. Okay. I, you know, we have a woman now, uh, President, yes. in Draupadi I'm Morbo. very happy. You are very happy about that. And yet, remember, there could have well been a consensus on her name. First Adivasi, second woman president. There wasn't. The, the opposition chose Yashwan Sinha, who in a way, many would say, represented the old guard. And the BJP put out someone who represents, as you yourself saying, someone you are very happy about. So, you know, is the BJP, therefore, a party which is seeing the future and the opposition is looking at the past. That Margaret Alva, Yashwan Sinha represent the past, Draupadi, Murmu and to some extent Jagdeep Dhankar, the future. Dhankar represents the future. God save India. On that note, Margaret Alva, as always outspoken as ever, some things certainly haven't changed over the years. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much Thank and you, wish you all the very best Thank for the you. elections. Thank you so much. Margaret Alva, the candidate of the opposition for the vice president's election later this week. Thanks for watching.